Hello Internet, Hewlett here with another Burn and Learn, and uh, yes, it's the lightsabers are back, and I'll tell you why. Because Aaron, who is the man responsible for uh, getting to these, thanks to, um, through Red Giant, uh, well, Red Giant and Aaron, but Aaron, I think, may have been part of the catalyst of this. Um, he was telling about how you can, you can program these. So I had this thing apart, and I was sort of curious to see how it all worked, obviously. So a little, that's the, sort of that houses the speaker, which is right there. You knock that sucker out. Out comes the board, just sort of sound, a custom soundboard that um, these Ultra Saber guys have made. And then there's a nice little USB port there. You just plug it into a Mac or PC, and you can customize sounds, you can customize uh, colors, um, what the system does when you, when you move it, so how it reacts to, uh, to movement and, 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 and strikes and all that kind of stuff, and force moves. Um, so really fun. I'm gonna turn it off now so you can hear me. Um, so burn and learn, let's get to that. This is a Saturday, why am I doing a burn and learn? Because Friday sucked, I felt horrible and achy and I thought this was a day I needed to take off. So I took off Friday, I thought I'd get up bright and early Saturday, get stuff done, but we're sort of in this cocoon right now because Baz Bratlett goes to school on Monday and it's a new school, he's a little nervous about it, we're all a little nervous about it. And um, so I've just been hanging out with him. So Friday was kind of a fun, cozy day. We did a bunch of stuff together, Magic the Gathering and gaming, and, and we watched Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, brilliant Frank Oz movie, like a modern classic comedy, not that modern anymore. Um, and normally Bratlett won't sit through those things, but boy, he was definitely giggling away there. And of course it helps when when you've got Jane watching it, watching it. I don't think she'd actually seen it before. Maybe she'd seen bits of it, I don't know. But she was howling away. There's nothing like, you know, Steve Martin making it into himself in, in those early days. And uh, Michael Caine is the straight man. And of course, just Frank Oz has this wonderful sense of humor to himself anyway. So, uh, great movie. If you haven't seen it, that's a, that's a two thumbs up from me. So, we've just been hanging around. I thought this morning, oh great, I'll be up at 7 a.m., get stuff done. Um, a horrible night again for some reason, uh, partially because Jane <laughs> Jane couldn't sleep either. Um, and uh, so we, um, we, sort of, we, we didn't get as good a start as I'd like to have, but I tell you, I have like, I'm priming and painting these parts for one of Baz's games. I've got another piece being uh, 3D printed right now for Easy Robot, which I cannot wait to play with. Uh, this is a new uh, sort of simple kind of 3D printed robot system that they've got. And uh, they want me to try it out and you know play with it a little bit. Uh, so that is what I will be doing. Uh, and one of the reasons why the learn part of my Burn and Learn today was not reading um, continued stuff on Steam, which I have very much been enjoying, I just wanted a bit of a break from that and I started doing my uh, lynda.com Fusion 360 Essentials. So I just sat down and started plowing through that and I just love, I just love knowing everything about us, about software. This, I, I've always liked manuals, um, tutorials, when they started becoming available online, I just couldn't get enough and I'm still, I still like whoo, sucking this stuff in. I just, oh, amazing. Anyway, so Fusion 360 just seemed like a good way into the 3D printing and the um, CNC milling kind of stuff that I'm, that I'm toying with playing with with the uh, Tech Terrors this year. And um, although I have this new idea, I found this beautiful 3D printed DIY six axis robot. And it's a solid looking baby. And, and I thought, well, what if you, instead of spending the money on a CNC machine, what if you, what if you built this, this six axis robot and then just handed a router. <laughs> so basically I'm the handed a router or a stepper or whatever you would need to do. And so you'd have this great sense of freedom from the arm and you'd still be able to cut wood and, and uh, do all sorts of things. Hell, you could use lasers. And, and I think if it's precise enough, you could do some really neat stuff. So I'm, I'm wondering if anyone's had any experience with that and if that's, if that's even a possibility. Um, I'll put some links to the robot and to the, the robotic arm and the, um, uh, there are tutorials on how to build it and stuff. Tutorials, <laughs> more, more tutorials, sorry. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very eager to see if there's a way of using that, like instead of a CNC machine, if you could use this 3D um, printed robotic arm. I mean, there's aluminum parts as well. And um, God, there's been so, there's just so much stuff. The CNC side of stuff is very exciting because it's just so many options. I mean, even one of them being, you know, build your own um, lightsabers. I mean, the idea of just taking aluminum pipe and I guess this is one of some kind of polycarbon um, uh, plastic uh, tubing and you could build your own. I mean, the kids could be building their own uh, lightsabers and then of course, then pummeling each other with them. Nah, maybe that's a bad idea. Anyways, um, still, I like the idea of a robotic CNC arm. Um, 
So that is what I've been up to. Uh, I have um, also done a clean install. That is not an easy process, a clean install of the Mojave, the new Mojave operating system for OS X, uh, for the Macs. And um, God, I just failed at every turn, everything I did, every set of instructions I, I, I went through just it, it, it failed miserably. Eventually got it working this morning, and so I've done a clean install on an old um, MacBook Air so that Bratlett has a computer for school on Monday, uh, which he's really excited about. He's set up his own name and his account and all that stuff. So I'm, uh, I'm curious to see how that'll go. I thought it was a good sign that the first thing he installed was, was, was GarageBand, because then at least this, I like the idea that he's, it wasn't directly to gaming. Um, and luckily with the Macs, it's a little more limited with what he can do. Certainly the games he wants to play, I, most of them aren't available on Mac, although Fortnite is, I guess. But Fortnite was a bit buggy on the Mac, I found. Anyways, um, so he's had some fun with that. He's now off shopping for uniforms with his mom, <laughs> which is kind of neat. They're, they're just, well, I should say pseudo-uniforms because they're, they're, I mean, it's basically just some khaki pants and stuff. But he's got, like, kind of the semblance of a uniform at the school. So we'll see how that goes. And, um, and obviously it's going to be, I'm sort of ready to take a big breath because we are about to sort of dive into a whole new school and a whole new real push to get him back on track with education and stuff and hopefully get him excited about it as well. So, um, yes, there you go. There you have it. There you be. That is my uh, burn alert for the day. Uh, so until we geek again, sweaty or not, here I come. Cheerio!